So I'm now visible. You are now visible. Fantastic. Right. right. So this time I have people in the office with me. Yay! I like I like last week. So welcome to the River Horse live stream of the 16th of August and uh, 2019. And um, so. Without much further ado, I'll uh, support it by the team over there. So finally, not on my own. So the technical side of this for this will be much better than last week's. Seamless. <laughs> Seamless, absolutely. Um, well, already the cameras are. There's two cameras instead of one, so it must be better. I'll um, I'll go through the uh, to the newsletter for the newsletter first, and of course the newsletter starts with uh, August and OBS. So um, this has just come up. Uh, arrive here. We have the first actual product to 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 unbox with you, and to, we had a look, and it's fantastic. It's very exciting, obviously. <laughs> I'll say so myself. But you know, as a geek, I cannot help being excited about this kind of stuff. So, uh, so obviously, yes, and I will unbox it in a second after I've gone through the the rest of the newsletter. Uh, what's after that? Oh, yes, there's an interview with Anka Sent. Uh, Anka brought a lot of, uh, sorry, not brought, illustrated a lot of the uh, of the our uh, My Little Pony Tales of Equestria books. A lot of the creatures in there uh, have been drawn by her, and uh, the interview uh, is a cheerful uh, talk about role play games and uh, her, you know, because she's very much into her role play games. And so, if you want to have a have a view of what she likes and the way she goes about RPGs and artwork, uh, it's a it's a great listen. I think we have some very very funny comments about. Uh, her hair, which is very very funny, so go and share it. It's quite um, quite entertaining. And after that, speaking of my little pony, there's a question. We have our creature feature. So in the creature feature, we tend to put um, you know, kind of creatures, ponies, monsters, any anything that is to do with there's a question that you have created or we have created. Basically, we add stuff to the we add. New, uh, new new creatures to this to the system to the game and uh, some of them have been created by you guys with you know, you've sent in your uh, your your drawings your 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 rules and uh, and, and Caesar has uh, also made the uh, official version of, of the artwork uh, of your artwork so keep them coming the fun uh, it's very it's very nice to actually get them for yourselves as well to see your your concept being approved and put into the uh, put into the into the game. Uh, in this particular case, we have an example of something we created, or rather, uh, it's in uh, it's in Peter Slides Follies, so it comes out in one of our books, and is the Hurricanter. The Hurricanter uh, is a bit like a Windigo. It's a uh, kind of a creature of the sky that feeds, this one in particular, feeds on uh, fear, panic, and creates storms. So uh, you will find the stats and the gaming stats there in the, in the picture. Uh, and after that, the next article is the new reveal for the Labyrinth card game. So this time, uh, what we reveal is the face card and the ace of the suit of the, one of the minor suits, and this is the suit of clocks. And something very cute about the suit of clocks uh, is that uh, every card has the the, the, the short hand of the clock is uh, basically follows the number of the card. So on card on the ace is on the one. On the on, number, on card number two, on the two of clocks would be on the two, on the three of clocks would be the three. So if you flick through the, the cards, it looks like the hand is moving as well. It's quite cool. So, and the artwork, of course, as usual, it's fantastic. My favorite probably is that dancing uh, Jareth. It's very, I think, uh, captures the movement of the of the magic dance. I think very cool. So it would be in the in the Facebook gallery where you can see the the cards that we for the from the card game that we have revealed until now. Every week we reveal some more, some more, like three cards of, or, or a set of uh, face cards, like, like in this case. So go on Facebook, have a look, lovely cards. Okay, what's next? After that is the comic by Caesar, um, <laughs> which uh, obviously the, uh, the August and Oubliette is a collection of uh, standees, so basically cardboard stand-ups with, with the base uh, that represent creatures, monsters, and uh, other characters in, in My Little Pony in, in a roleplay setting. So this this game is kind of the opposite of last week when I had no staff. Maybe this time the staff had no me. Maybe they were dealing with a cabo counter all day and they didn't know. Clearly <laughs> clearly Boy and George his high his eyesight must be a little short because he can't quite tell. 
Okay, what's next? Oh, after that is the something going back to quite a distant past where uh, Shura, one of our, I'm sure, the first game River Ross ever made, and Turanga, its expansion. Uh, and there's uh, some people in Spain that actually decided to run a tournament of it and uh, have uh, uh, like a, a ranking, etc. And it's, you know, it's quite interesting and people are still playing those good oldies, as I to see. And finally, yeah, we get into the pre-order section, the, the section that announces this live stream. So quite a lot of pre-orders there. Pacific Rim, Jim of so the Labyrinth of the Adventure Game. Yeah. So we have pre-ordering the, the Adventure Game, Orgs and Blyanth, Hunger Games, and the card game, and a lot of Pacific Rim stuff. Lots of pre-orders. Cool. So that was the newsletter sorted. And now <laughs> the main attraction. <laughs> the main attraction, we are going to have a look inside the box of Ogres and Oubliettes. So if we switch to the small camera, seamlessly. <laughs> we seamlessly switch to the show, the cross camera. So that's the box, which is the same size as uh, as Og uh, sorry as a uh, Curse of Statuette and or the starter set. So it's a standard uh, My Little Pony box. And this one is quite heavy as well because you will see in a second I'm lifting the lid. And in there there's quite a lot of stuff. So what do we have? We begin with the bases. So there's one large base. One large base for large <laughs> cardboard cutouts, large monsters. Is this distance okay? Do you want me close yeah, to the camera? Yeah, that's that's fine. fine. Yeah. So one large base and Ten smaller bases for smaller creatures, normal sized creatures. I mean, I suppose you can also use two of these for larger standouts if you want. They, they become like feet. So, a bunch of these bases, ten and one. What's in there next? Oh, then you have the leaflet, the actual adventure, Ogres and Oubliettes. So, this features the, the main six in uh, role play. So, we have Applejack as a, as a, I would say, a fighter. We have Rainbow Dash as a rogue. Some of them are from the show, because obviously there's a, an August and Obliette episode, but also some of them we, we managed to, to add to complete the set. So Spike as a wizard, Twilight Sparkle as a wizard, or sorcerer perhaps. <laughs> Fluttershy had to be a druid, right? So there you go. Uh, rarity, I would think, looks like a paladin to me, so I would think is <laughs> yes or maybe a warlock mm. interesting and then we have of course Pinkie Pie as a bard because of course she likes her music and the uh, bestiary of the creatures in this adventure the, the squizzards <laughs> and these uh, skeletal ponies so the uh, the adventure is actually quite an interesting um, kind of adventure within the adventure because uh, it's basically uh, discord uh, basically asking the, the, the pony your normal pony characters to play a game with him so basically to role play so it's a role play within a role play and uh, so now your characters your pony characters will have to create characters <laughs> for for ogres and oubliettes and play a game of ogres and oubliettes with this card as you know this card obviously will then make sure that they actually experience their the rpg in a very very realistic term so they it will kind of bring them into the world of ogres and oubliettes so face the you face the squizzard with your uh, with your pony characters characters, <laughs> which is quite a, a mind trip. There you go. Oh, I can actually see the short cam now, even more seamless. So I can actually make sure that the reflection of the, of the light is not uh, basically. If I do that, you don't see anything. You see a big reflection. If I do that, much better, right? Great idea. See what I'm doing. All right. What else is in the box? Now the next thing in the box is. A beautiful and useful for a GM, for a pony master, a map of Equestria. Nice, always useful for role play. Love maps. And then we get to the forte of the box, which actually, let's put it this way. There you go. There is a number of punch cards here. How many is it? Do we know? How many sheets? How, how many? many, how many boards? Yeah, punch cards. One, two, three, Seven. four, five, six. Six, unless we remove one. <laughs> Six punch words, and how many, how many creatures and characters? Over a hundred. Over a hundred. So quite a lot of stuff. So th this first one here, the green one, seems to be monsters of nature. I mean, it ranges from. Let's see what I can do from the Manticore from the very first episode. So basically, it's a mix of creatures from the series, from our books, 
So you recognize all of these characters from our books or from the series. Flying creatures have this little stem. I'll demonstrate in a second how it fits within the uh, within the bases. Uh, an interesting feature is that the oops that the uh, they have a code on the each each uh, each character has a little code where the base fits, so it's actually hidden then. But it tells you where you find it. So BOE page twenty three best of request there page twenty twenty three. So you can find the stats of the creature. As you've seen, things pop out of the of the punch board easily, which is a very important thing because you don't want to rip them. You don't want to that to, to, to struggle to push them out, and so you just very easily they come out nice and neat. I mean, the, the quality of the, the punch board is excellent, so I'm very happy with the suppliers here. They, they did a great job. Well done, Wally. Very good, very good. Um, so again, first one here. I will demonstrate a base fit, for example, for a flying creature. So there you go. You see, very easy fit within the with that. And if I can do it on the, I'm not sure what you can see, but there you are on the table. Uh, while a smaller creature, for example, a yak, <laughs> goes into its into its base there, and it's all very smooth and neat and uh, okay, voila. The arranging size quite considerably. I will put uh, one of the largest ones. I'll put the largest one here. Read for you once uh, once we're done. Anyway, so back they go. Um, I mean, these will be great. Be great for obviously setting up your scenes during during the the, the RPG adventure. But also, I, I'm sure from my experience of playing Tales of Equestria yeah, uh, with young ones, uh, they they spend a lot of time playing around with these things, and uh, it's very entertaining to watch. What's the next? The next punch board. Ooh, speaking of the largest punch board, there we go. The largest creature. Out comes the Dragon Lord. Here it is, and it is massive. Right, out he comes. This is actually oh, and I punched out a small token because there's not only creature, there's also tokens featuring pieces of equipment. In this case, an arrow, but there's a lot of actually um, quite. Um, very typical RPG things, weapons and uh, tools, and also some very Equestria other things like ice creams, cupcakes, uh, potions. There's a lot of cool stuff. So, well, uh, the largest <laughs> roar, I'd say. Uh, so we have Lord Tyrak, the Point of Shadows. Let me show you some more dragons. Point of Shadows, Lord Tyrak, dragons, a selection of dragons there, the Phoenix. There you go. And lots and lots of tokens to fill the space in between the, the main the main standees. What's the next one? Oh, this is the ghostly the ghostly uh, sheet. So you have a lot of monsters, kind of spooky monsters, ranging in size from the Ursa Major whoop, to, uh, I mean, there's, the, there's Nightmare Moon, there's a lot of fiery stuff and uh, or some minor so yes a lot of lot of ghostly monsters and this one is probably the one that we'll see most use i would say ponies pony characters famous pony characters princess luna princess celestia but also the main six in their adventuring year and uh, our three characters, so we have Freely Feely, Strong Oak, uh, and where is she? Where is she? I see her, I see her, I'm sure she must be here. Two. Aha. Yeah, Thunder. <laughs> Firebrand is there. Top left corner, thank you. <laughs> I found Firebrand as well, just next to Princess Luna. Okay, so I think again the Diamond Dogs are here, Flumes are here. Yeah, there's a lot of King Sombras there. So there's a lot of ponies. And this is probably the ones that, these are probably the ones that will be used the most. What's next? More traditional monsters, so water and air from the water and from the air. Giant crab, rocks, rocks of different time, more eels, hippogriffs in both their uh, sea pony version and their uh, hippogriffs, griffins. Lots of different creatures there for you. Paras sprites, sharks. Yep, there's definitely a mix. Windigo, definitely a mix of um, our books and the series and the thing and the movie. And last but not least, the most themed spread, which is the one definitely based on uh, Nogis Rublietz. You have the 
So these, you can see that these are actually square, while actually the other ones are shaped silhouettes. I mean, the bookworm is a good example of this shaped silhouette version, where you can see the... Uh, it's a beautiful, I think, beautiful standee because of it. You know, it's an elegant curve that you can identify straight away, fits into its base, and then there you go. So you have these nice shaped silhouetted uh, standees and then you have the more traditional square ones and these are indeed because in the in the in the episode themselves in itself they are actually shaped like that so they are rectangular <laughs> they're like uh, drawings effectively so you have them and the squizzard is falling out because we might have punched it out already <laughs> a few times before <laughs> there you go face the squizzard in august and yes main enemy and that is it. I mean, the, the rest of the of the yellow punch board has cool character animated books. So this is the the bookish, <laughs> the bookish monsters, the bookish creatures, paper animated creatures here. And that's the last one. So I'm sure you agree with me. There is a lot of stuff in here. There's a lot of fun in here. All these creatures, all these standees will, you know, make a table, cover a table in uh, in, in fun and uh, kind of something that will make your games become more, well, easy to follow. There's, there's a practicality to it, but also uh, more fun. And I will then put them back in. A one, a two. Uh, we switch to, are we off the miniature camera now? <laughs> okay, so I don't need to be careful, but uh, putting all six punch was in there over 100 pieces the the map the adventure the basis and the lid that was it i can't wait to play <laughs> with these a bit more that was originally it i hope you liked it and uh, unless there's any other questions i can uh, close this live stream uh, there's no further questions. Okay, thank you very much then, and I uh, shall see you next week.